Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. This one is going to be kicking off a new series of weapon build videos that looks at effective builds you can set up at different levels, primarily using items that you'll have unlocked at the traders within that level range. To start off, this video will be taking a look at some of the first weapons you'll be able to set up between levels 1 to 10. These builds will be basic and budget focused for newer and low level players, but I'm aiming to showcase some of the options you have for actual customization at this level. In my older videos like this, my main recommendations for low level players was to hit level 5 and then use the flea market to start setting up builds. But with the market moving to level 10, players will now be stuck using only what they can find in raid or buy from the traders until level 10. For this video, I'll be going over 5 different builds instead of my usual 3, simply because they're extremely basic builds due to the limited items available. So with that out of the way, let's start with one of the most basic weapons you can set up right from level 1. One of the first rifles you'll be able to buy in Escape from Tarkov is the SKS at proper level 1, with a 10 round internal magazine you need to load one at a time. The SKS is an extremely simple weapon, but it's also very useful if you make good shots with it, and it's extremely cheap to run since you don't technically need extra mags or a big tactical rig to carry them. From level 1 to 10, you won't be able to put any sights onto the basic SKS, but at level 10 when you unlock Peacekeeper level 2, you can purchase 20 round detachable mags to make reloading a whole lot easier. It's not fancy, and it's not the most versatile weapon, especially with the internal mag, but the SKS shoots a fairly powerful round, and at level 1 the 7.62x39PS rounds are basically the best ammo you have available. This build altogether costs about 22,000 rubles, and if you want to add the 20 round magazines, they're about $50 each from Peacekeeper level 2. For this spot, I'd also like to give an honorable mention to the Mosin from proper level 1. I'm personally not a huge fan of this rifle, but if you're patient and hit your first shot, this is one of the most damaging weapons that you can get at level 1. You can buy it from proper level 1 with iron sights, or trade some batteries for a scoped version. Either way, the Mosin definitely deserves a spot on this list, and I figured I'd put it next to the SKS as another very simple rifle you can get right from level 1. Next up in this video, I'll be showing you how you can get a red dot onto any full-size AK type rifle that you can get your hands on during the early game, and improve the stats a little bit by upgrading the basic parts. From level 1 to 10, you can't buy any good AKs for straight up money, but you can trade for the Vepr 136 from Skier for 2 horse statues, or a full auto AKM from Proper for 3 Tashanka cans. You will also most definitely find plenty of Vepers, AKMs, and AK-74s out in the raid on scavs and in boxes, and this setup can be used on any full size AK you find. The first and most important part of this build is the Ultimac Railed Gas Tube from Skier Level 1. This item is extremely cheap and replaces both the handguard and gas tube on your AK. With this attached, you have a top rail for a small red dot sight, and a slight buff to recoil. For the sight itself, at level 1 your options are pretty much limited to the PK-06 from Jaeger, or the Burris Fast Fire from Peacekeeper. I usually choose the Fast Fire because it's cheaper and it has a nice clear dot when it's mounted farther up on the rifle on the Ultimac. Next, you can switch out the default wooden parts on your AK with the black polymer parts from proper level 1 if you want. I like to do this because it makes your rifle look nicer, and it improves the ergo and recoil slightly for almost no cost. Personally, a semi-auto Vepr 136 with this build is my go-to weapon for the first 10 levels. It's easy and cheap to set up, gives you an upgrade from the iron sights, and actually looks pretty nice too. For the total cost on this build, you're looking at 2 horse statues or 3 Tashanka cans for the weapon trade, plus around 15,000 rubles in parts. I would say it's probably in your best interest to stick with the 7.62 AKs with this setup until you've unlocked 5.45 PS rounds by completing the Delivery from the Past quest. Until you complete this, you can only buy PRS rounds, and those are arguably the worst bullet in the entire game. For this same reason, I also wouldn't really recommend running the AK-74U until you can unlock the PS rounds. It's the first full auto rifle that you can buy, but without decent ammo, it's almost useless. For the third build in this video, here's another very useful early game rifle that continues to be useful throughout most of the game because of all the different mods that you can unlock for AR-15 type rifles later on. The ADAR, like the Vepr 136, is a very common drop from scavs, so it's quite easy to find that way, and you can also get one by trading a rechargeable battery to skier at level 1. The ADAR is for all intents and purposes a semi-auto M4. It's not amazing at close range because of this, but it fires a faster, more accurate round than the early game 7.62 weapons, which makes it pretty useful for mid-range fights. 
From levels 1 to 9, you're basically going to be stuck with iron sights on the ADAR because none of the sights that you can purchase have enough clearance to go over the front sight post. And trust me, you don't want to make the mistake of using a sight on this thing that won't reach over the front post because you won't be able to aim accurately. With that in mind, if you make the trade from Skier, make sure you buy the CA2 rear sight from Peacekeeper so you have something to aim with. At level 10, when you unlock Peacekeeper level 2, you can unlock a few things that you can put onto the ADAR which add a bit more to the build. First, you unlock the RMR at Peacekeeper level 2, and it has a high profile mount. With this, you can get over the front sight post and now have a usable red dot sight on the ADAR. One other thing I like to start adding to these rifles once I unlock it is the KAC QD Compensator at Peacekeeper level 2, which allows you to attach the NT4 suppressor if you find it in the raid. These are fairly common drops in weapon crates, and it can be super helpful to quickly add a suppressor to your build in the middle of a raid. For the total cost on this one, you're looking at one rechargeable battery for the trade, plus around 20,000 rubles in parts if you add the sight and the compensator. Next up, I've got a few SMG builds for you to finish off the video, starting with the PP-19 Vichyaz SMG. This used to be my most used level 1 weapon when it was purchasable, but now you'll need to make a trade of 5 T-plugs to get this thing from proper level 1. Fortunately, T-plugs are very easy to find in large quantities, so you should be able to complete the trade for this without too much trouble. The PP-19 is a 9mm weapon, which comes with some disadvantages like poor range and low armor penetration. However, in the early stages of a wipe when there isn't much armor available, this thing shreds, and it's one of the first full auto weapons you can get with purchasable 30 round mags and decent recoil. If you go for head shots, this thing is easy to control on full auto and is a fairly useful weapon for low level players to fight scavs and other low geared PMCs at close range. The Vichyaz can also be modded fairly well at level 1, being one of the only weapons that you can get a sight, laser, and foregrip onto at level 1. I'll be showing how to do this, but realistically the most important attachment for this build is the Cobra Reflex Sight from proper level 1. This optic attaches to anything with a dovetail mount, so it can also be used on most AK-74s, the Vepper Hunter, and an SKS with the dovetail mount. The reticle kind of sucks, but it's better than iron sights. For the most part, you can just add the sight and leave it here for the build. However, on this setup, I switched the handguard for the Polymer AK-100 series handguard at proper level 1. This allows you to attach a foregrip and laser, and you could also use this on most AK rifles as well, to easily and cheaply add a foregrip. Just to show you what's available, I added the NC Star Blue Laser from Skier Level 1 and the KAC Vertical Grip at Peacekeeper Level 1. Both of these are cheap, but honestly, they're very optional on this build. For the total cost on this one, you're looking at 5 T-plugs for the weapon trade, plus around 20,000 rubles in parts if you bought everything I show on this build. This one quickly falls off as players get access to more armor, but when everyone is level 1, the Vichyaz is a beast at close range fights, and it's pretty cheap. Finally, for the last build in this video, we'll be taking a look at another SMG build, the MP5. The pros and cons of the MP5 are basically the same as the PP-19, but the MP5 is better in almost every way. It shoots faster, it's more accurate, can take bigger mags if you find them, and it has lower recoil. Against unarmored or lightly armored enemies, it drops them very fast, but like the PP-19, it quickly loses out against heavier armor. From level 1 to 9, you can only get this from Peacekeeper by trading the brown-handled knives, but these are on almost every scav you kill, so it's a pretty easy trade. You can also buy an MP5K, which is just an MP5 with no stock and much higher recoil. At level 10, when you unlock Peacekeeper level 2, you can buy a regular MP5 and a suppressed version, plus the mount that you need to get a sight onto this thing. Before level 10, you'll have to run the MP5 with iron sights, but once you hit level 10, you can buy the MFI HK Universal Scope mount at Peacekeeper level 2. This lets you put a red dot sight onto the MP5, which really helps with aiming. For this setup, I just picked the Delta Point Reflex Sight at Peacekeeper level 2, but most sights will fit onto this rail. For the total cost on this build, you're looking at 8 knives or $280 for the weapon, plus about 20,000 rubles total in parts. Like the PP-19, the MP5 is meant for close range fighting and run and gun plays. At low levels, this is one of the lowest recoil full auto guns you can get, and it mows down scavs and low geared PMCs real easy. Just make sure you aim for the head if they look like they have any type of armor. Well that about covers it for these weapon builds. They're pretty simple, but from level 1 to 10 you don't really have much of a choice unless you're heading out to scavenge your weapons and all of their individual parts one by one. For the next entry in this series, I'll be looking at some builds for level 10 to 20 players, focusing mostly on items available at the traders. The selection really opens up after level 10, so future videos like this will probably have a part 1 and a part 2 going over more detailed builds. 
I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch, and it'd be great to have you drop by the stream, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. There's also links to my Twitter and Discord down below, which I use to send out notifications when I'm going live. Finally, there's a link to my Patreon page as well, and if you want to be an absolute beauty and support the channel, consider checking that out. It lets me commit more time to the channel and keep the content coming. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.